In this module, we're going to talk about how to use z-scores to get to percentiles. Um, this really only makes sense if you can make the reasonable assumption that your, your sample, which I've illustrated here with a polygon, and I'm assuming that there might be something like 60 scores in this sample, um, but this, this polygon we've plotted looks relatively normal, and so it might very well be reasonable to assume that these numbers were drawn from a population that is, in fact, a normal distribution. Uh, where the sample, because of its limited size, has a rather jagged and not perfect um, outline to the frequency distribution. On the other hand, the normal distribution is assumed to be based on an infinite number of scores. It's as if these intervals that you've had to come up with in order to plot the polygon can get infinitely small because you have so very many numbers in that population. Um, for those of you who know a little bit of calculus, um, that's how you come up with a nice smooth distribution, infinitely small intervals. And the vertical axis on this is not exactly the same thing as frequency, although it's analogous to it. This is a probability measure, basically called probability density. Um, the higher the curve is, the more probable that value along this axis is. So the mean is actually the most probable number to be drawn from the population um, because it has the highest probability density value. Now, we don't need to worry about all that. All we need to know is that we're dealing with a set of numbers from our sample that came from a normal distribution, and if that's the case, then we can use z-scores in order to turn raw scores into percentiles directly. I've used the same values that I computed um, in an earlier module. I've assumed that we've got a sample that has a mean of 30 seconds. This might be how much time it takes to solve a problem on some task. 30 seconds would be the, uh, the mean. The standard deviation is 7.92 seconds. Um, let me tell you a little bit more about the normal distribution before we begin. The normal distribution, once it's been standardized and put into z-score units, as I've shown down here, um, has some really nice properties to it. If you have your textbook uh, and you look on page, I think it's around 116 in the 5th edition, somewhere around 110 in the 4th edition. But what it shows us is if we know that we are sitting at one standard deviation above the mean, we know that, that a proportion of 0.3413 of the scores will fall between the mean and one standard deviation above the mean, and that same proportion, 0.3413, will fall in that region below the mean, that is from the mean down to a negative one z-score. Um, same thing for all the other intervals, they're just smaller. You can see that these areas are smaller if the farther out you go. This is 0.1359, and so is this one. This one is 0.0275, as is this one. In other words, if you were to look between two standard deviations above the mean and three standard deviations above the mean, you would get this small proportion of scores, 0 0.0275. And finally, there is some chance you get something even beyond that, although it's pretty low, 0 0.0013. And that's true over here as well, but I don't have enough room to, to write that in. Basically, the normal distribution uh, table that's in the back of our book will tell us these proportions even if they are values that aren't these perfect 0, plus 1, plus 2, plus 3, or whatever. Um, for example, let's suppose that we have a raw score, excuse me, not a mean, but a raw score of 42 seconds for someone in our task. And we want to find out what's that person's percentile. We're going to turn it into a z-score, as we did in an earlier module. We simply take the deviation score and express it in standard deviation units. 
42 minus our mean of 30 over our standard deviation of 7.92. That gives us a 12 over 7.92, and that gives us a z-score of 1.52. Our person's time of 42 seconds is a little bit more than one and a half standard deviations above the mean, the z-score of 1.52. Rather than to try to eyeball it and estimate it from this diagram, we can go to the table of the normal distribution and go over to column 5. Column 5, I'm going to give you a little diagram of it here. In column 5, if you have a z-score, as we do, the 1.52, and we look it up in column 5, it will tell us what this area is. We know it's going to be a little bit bigger than 0.3413 because it's farther out than 1. It's 1.52. Once we know that, we can then add it to the 0 0.50, which we know to be the entire area up to the mean, and we'll have the person's uh, percentile. So 1.52, that's my z-score. So I go down the z-score column until I come to 1.52. I go over to column 5 and it tells me that that area is 0 .4357. 0 .4357. And I also know that this has to be 0 0.500 because it represents dividing the normal distribution in half, in half, right at the mean. If you add, on either side of the normal distribution's mean, if you add these areas together, they'll add up to 0.5. So basically, my person who has a z-score of 1.52 has a percentile found by taking 0.4357 and adding it to 0.500 that is 0.9357. That means that this measure of 42 seconds is longer than this proportion of all the scores, 0.9357, which basically means we're at the 93.57 percentile. basically the 93rd or 94th percentile. Now in this case, using time as a measure of uh, speed and dealing with a, a, a task, um, a high percentile wouldn't be so good, would it? It would mean you take uh, longer than almost anybody else who's done this task. But we've started with a raw score of 42. We've converted it into a percentile using the table of the normal distribution. Let's do a couple more, um, perhaps a little bit more quickly. Let's say that our raw score is 35 seconds. That's still above the mean a little bit. We convert it to a z-score by taking 35 minus the mean, which is 30, divided by 7.92. That gives us 5 over 7.92. It's going to be a little less than one standard deviation. Point 0.63. We have a z-score of 0.63. Gets this. We are not quite one standard deviation above the mean. We're 0.63 standard deviations above the mean. Column 5 will tell me what that area is, though. If I look up the z score of 0.63, column 5 tells me that the area is 0.2357. Add that to the 
0.50 on this side, we get 0.7357 or 73rd or 74th percentile. 73.57. One more. And we'll get a value this time that's below the mean, just to show you um, the slight difference here. Um, let's say we have a raw score of 24 seconds. We're going to convert that to z-scores. 24 minus 30 or 7.92. Minus 6 over 7.92, so it's not quite one standard deviation below the mean. Point 0.76. Z-score of 0.76. Now we could go to column 5, as we've been doing. Negative 0.76, sorry. And we can see what this area is between the mean and a z score of minus 0.76. Let's actually do that. 0 0.2764. 0.2764. Now, in order to find out what percent of all the scores are lower, we actually need to know what this area is right here. Basically, what's left on this side of the mean. So what we could do here is we could take the 0 0.500, which is this entire area to the left of the mean, and subtract the 0.2764 and get our percentile, 0.5 minus 0.2764, and we get 0.2236. This area, 0.2236, 22nd or 23rd percentile, 22.36. Now that involved a little subtraction instead of addition, as in the first two. But, we could have gotten this more directly. Column 3 in your table, instead of dealing with areas between the mean and some z-score, what column 3 gives you is areas from a z-score out into the tail, either in this direction or in the other direction. So if our negative 0.76 z-score is here, and we find out what's out in the tail, we have the answer directly. I sure hope when I look it up, it comes out to be 0.2236. Um, let's try it. 0.76, go over to column 3, and sure enough, it's 0.2236. So our score is 0.76 standard deviations below the mean. How likely is that to occur? Um, well, there are only 22.36% of scores that ought to be um, below that or faster than that. All right. I wish I could see if there were any questions.